4 million newly born babies in the world die every year. 1.2 million of these deaths occur in Africa. Neonatal deaths mainly occur during delivery, the first week of delivery and in the first four weeks of a baby's life. At this stage, a baby's life is very vulnerable. In the Africa region, statistics put it that um, every minute we are losing about eight children who are under five. But of these eight, two are newborns. That is the magnitude of the problem of newborns in Africa and Uganda in particular. In Uganda, when you look at the contribution of newborns to the picture of infant deaths, we recognize that newborn deaths are contributing to almost 38%. So it's still a very huge problem in Uganda. Uganda is one of the five main contributors to neonatal mortality in Africa, with 40,000 deaths each year. In Uganda, the common causes of deaths, of newborn deaths, in descending order, is mainly birth asphyxia, difficult labor, difficult delivery. So the child is born, the baby is born very tired, and they survive for a few minutes or hours, and they succumb to death. And the second one is infections. And mainly in Uganda here we have neonatal tetanus. Tetanus is claiming a big number of these newborn lives. And other infections following poor hygiene and care of the cord practiced by our mothers in the rural in our communities. And thirdly, the complications of preterm life, preterm delivery birth where you have prematurity as the highest cause, uh, I mean, coming on because the, the, bodies, the body systems are still immature. They have not developed, so they cannot cope with the life outside their mother's wombs. The majority of mothers in Uganda deliver at home and not in health facilities as required. Only 48% of mothers deliver in health facilities. Widespread poverty among the population, cultural beliefs and practices, ill-equipped and poorly staffed health facilities, and lack of a clear program targeting newborn health have kept neonatal mortality rates in Uganda high. The number of expectant mothers who attend antenatal is high, but when it's time to give birth, many deliver at home, usually with the assistance of a traditional birth attendant otherwise known as TBA. With this HIV, which has come, in the hospital we insist not to share things. We told them to buy these necessities which are used during delivery, like the polythene, which we put on the what? On the delivery bed, such that the delivery, the delivery mattress is not soaked with the blood and it's really difficult for us to use that delivery bed on more mothers when it's soiled. Whereas in the traditional bath attendant, those things are not there. Because the traditional bath attendant can use only one polythene on whoever mother who comes. The same thing, the other maybe may not ask for what? For the gloves. She can use that glove on each mother. Hmm? Maybe she can just rewash and the sun it dry. When the other one comes, she uses the same thing, the same gloves. Whereby in a hospital, we don't encourage that. The, the little things we have in a hospital, they are not enough for the what? For the turn up of clients who come to deliver. You might find a mother can come when the things are over. So when you tell them to buy, at times they don't. At times they don't have money. So that might be a hindrance to this mother to run to the traditional birth attendant. Traditional birth attendants have over the years become an integral part of Ugandan society. 
They prescribe traditional medicine to expectant mothers and during delivery, they use simple tools like razor blades for cutting umbilical cords, gloves which are reused or not used at all, and pieces of cloth to carry out a delivery. These TBAs are not prepared for emergencies and the result of their advice is sometimes tragic. Twenty-one-year-old Nalumasi Allen, a resident of Kazingo village in Iganga district, was married for two years and looked forward to being a mother. When she became pregnant, she was overwhelmed with joy. She never visited any health facility because she felt she did not have any problem during pregnancy. And when labor pain started five months ago, she went to the place where everyone goes, the home of Aida Kazingo, the local traditional bath attendant. Nalumansi gave birth normally to a bouncing baby girl. But then she noticed that her baby had an abnormality. Upon being discharged on the same day, Nalumansi went home with her bundle of joy, but the baby continued bleeding profusely from the wounds where the extra fingers had been cut. For Nalumansi, the death of her child was a very traumatic experience. It's been five months now since her child was buried next to the graves of the twins of her co-wife who also died as newborns. Despite such tragedies, traditional bath attendants continue to be a popular choice for mothers. Some of the causes of neonatal deaths are found in the glaring gaps in Uganda's health system. The provision of maternal and newborn health care services are full of challenges. Compared to other services for children and mothers, the newborn has been a relatively neglected area. The School of Public Health, Makere University, with funding from Save the Children and support from other partners like WHO, UNICEF and Ministry of Health, is conducting a study on improving newborn health and survival in Uganda through a community-based intervention linked to health facilities. As Save the Children, we are interested in a world where all children are able to achieve their right to survive. But currently, many children do not benefit from that right to survive. Through our Saving Newborn Lives project, we are trying to raise global awareness and support, and support to reduce the number of deaths that occur during this period. That is the newborn period, the neonatal period. Uh, we are doing it through identifying uh, evidence-based solutions that can work especially in low-cost settings like our country. This study, which is uh, supported by 
the Saving Newborn Lives Initiative of Save the Children uh, USA is uh, arising out of uh, the observation that um, neonatal death, that is death of babies within the first four weeks of life have not really reduced much over the last couple of decades. Uh, we are aware that um, the Millennium Development Goal 4, which talks about reducing child deaths, is not going to be achieved if nothing is done on a new, newborn uh, survival. The study is being conducted at the demographic surveillance sites of Iganga and Mayuge districts. We are working around the household level of 12,000 households and a population of about 50,000 people. And many types of research, like social studies research, may want to use this cohort of people to collect data on social events in the districts of Iganga and Mayugi. So that once this data is collected, it can be used to inform policy. When we generate information, we call it evidence. We share it with the district people, and uh, they, it, can, they, they, it guides them in allocation of resources since we are in a limited resource kind of setting. The Saving Newborn Life Study aims to test cost effective interventions in neonatal health at community level using community health workers. One of the problems we've been having is the thinking that it requires very expensive technologies to reduce newborn mortality. But indeed, uh, our colleagues in Asia have shown that very simple interventions like a community health worker coming home and visiting a mother who has just given birth and giving advice on the care of a baby, this can reduce deaths of babies. And this is not expensive. The Iganga study will be demonstrating to Iganga, to other districts and to Uganda at large on how we can integrate community workers into newborn care uh, within the health system at district level in Uganda. This study will adapt, develop and cost any integrated maternal newborn care package that links community and health facility care and also evaluate its effect on maternal and neonatal practices to inform policy and scale up of interventions. We hope the results of this uh, study will inform uh, policy, uh, our government, especially the Ministry of Health, to come up with a strategy of reaching newborns and mothers at the community level during the first week when they are most vulnerable and actually need most care. The study will, among other things, identify gaps in the provision of health services in Uganda in general, but focus on issues of maternal and newborn health. Some of the critical findings is that really we have a big problem. For instance, health facilities do not provide good quality services. Indeed, most health workers are not able to provide the standard care to babies. And yet, like we have midwives, we have nurses, we have doctors, but they don't know how babies should be managed. They lack the skills, they cannot resuscitate a baby. The other key finding is that health facilities do not have any basic equipment and drugs for newborns. I would be more than happy if there was a program to target the newborn. Because it's a, as, let me say, a sect of human beings which is not targeted at the moment. We don't have a program for it at the community level. Iganga Hospital is a referral hospital for several districts in eastern Uganda. Its services are severely stretched because of its large number of patients and yet resources are limited. The health workers are very few. They can, one midwife cannot really cater for over five mothers. That's not quality service. Yeah, because we have to monitor a mother right from when she is admitted until delivery, then after delivery, then she is handed over to another midwife, which is at times very difficult. Many mothers have suffered painful consequences of these shortcomings at the health facilities. 
Madina Namukobe, a 37-year-old housewife and mother of nine, attended all antenatal visits when she was pregnant with her 10th baby. On the night of April 11th, 2008, she went into labor and was taken to hospital. At 3 a.m., the baby was due, but there was nobody to help her. Madina was only saved by a nurse preparing for her day shift, but it was already too late for her baby. At Namugalwe Health Center 3 in Iganga district, many mothers attend antenatal services, but few deliver at the center. It is mothers who develop complications that are brought here. The health center, however, is not well equipped to handle multiple deliveries. The instruments and materials needed are inadequate and the staff far too few. There is increased workload mm, and uh, uh, there is a shortage of staffs. Mm. Busesa Health Center 4 offers several maternal and child health services but faces many challenges. Some women come when it is late, they first delay in the community and by the time they come here, things are already what? Already late. Sometimes those, some of them deliver immediately, they reach here. Some of them come when labor is obstructed and they need what? Referral. Yes, some of them majorly coming late. And then the other one is that some of our women are, are so poor or poverty that uh, when even if you told them to buy just gloves, they don't have, and yet we don't, it is hard for us to have them in full 